Hey guys, how's it going? Today we are in St. Augustine, Florida, and we're going to show you 15 free things to do here in America's oldest city. Dating back to 1565, St. Augustine is the nation's oldest city, located 45 minutes south of Jacksonville. Visiting the ancient city has always been one of our favorite places to spend a Saturday or to have a longer weekend getaway. To say there's a lot to do here would be a serious understatement. It seems like there is a historic landmark or tourist attraction everywhere you look. And not surprisingly, most of those places charge admission. Visiting just a few can really take a huge bite out of your vacation budget if you're not careful. But there are ways to enjoy the history of St. Augustine without spending any money at all, and that's what we're going to show you today. Founded by the Spanish, St. Augustine is a city built on faith, and you'll find religious symbols and buildings everywhere you go. On the north side of town is one of the most serene places you'll find in St. Augustine. We start our list with the Mission Nombre de Dios. It was here in September of 1565 that Pedro Menendez de Avales proclaimed the site for Spain. The site is commonly referred to as the Sacred Acre here in St. Augustine. Tradition holds that the first mass in the new colony was held on the spot. The 208-foot Great Cross was raised on the grounds in 1965 to commemorate the 400th anniversary of the first parish Catholic mass. The Shrine of Our Lady of La Leche represents the first devotion to Mary in what is now the United States and is dedicated to motherhood. A statue of Mary nursing the infant Jesus brings both hope and solace to visitors from all over the world. I've actually caught the shrine at a pretty good time. Normally, there's usually about a dozen people in here praying. Right now, it's empty because it's early in the morning. In addition to a number of statues on the grounds, there's also a museum that focuses on the missionary effort from 1565 to the present. A short walk north from the mission is our number two recommendation. In the middle of the parking lot of this motel stands the Old Senator, a giant live oak tree that has survived countless hurricanes and generations of development. Experts believe this tree to be at least 600 years old, which means that this tree would have been standing here when Ponce de Leon discovered the Fountain of Youth just down the street. Outside this house on Cordova Street next door to Potter's Wax Museum stands the Love Tree. Here you'll find a sable palm growing out of the heart of an oak. So-called love trees are pretty common all over town. The old senator is one, but this one here on Cordova, this one, it's the most popular. Magnolia Avenue has been called one of the most photographed streets in America by National Geographic, and it is number three on our list. This spot is very popular with professional photographers. Brides love to come down here and have their photos taken. The street looks like something you would see in a movie with its majestic oak trees and Spanish moss-covered branches hanging over the pavement. This is the same street where the Fountain of Youth is located, so it's really easy to find. St. Augustine is home to the longest standing Ripley's Believe It or Not auditorium inside historic Castle Warden. But you don't have to pay and go inside the museum to see some really cool exhibits, our fourth recommendation. Outside in the parking lot, you can tour a four-room house made entirely of a redwood tree. A guy by the name of Lynn Moore decided to build his dream home after taking refuge in a burned out redwood during a storm. It took four months to chisel out the interior and over a year to build. This might just be the world's very first tiny house, but I'm glad the redwood concept, I'm glad that didn't catch on. This Mustang is made entirely of 1950 and 60 vintage car bumpers, and it was made for the 1987 Super Bowl. You can also see an exact reproduction of Michelangelo's famous David statue. It's one of only two copies in the world carved to the exact specifications as the original. St. Augustine actually has two Spanish forts you can explore. While there's a charge to go inside the fort downtown, there are no fees at Fort Matanzas, a short drive from the city and our fifth recommendation. A free boarding pass is required to take a ferry over to Rattlesnake Island, where the 18th century fort is located. While the fort is small and it never saw any battles, Matanzas was important in protecting the southern approach to St. Augustine. I tend to like this fort a little bit better than the one downtown because it's a lot less crowded and the natural beauty here. And of course, who doesn't like a free boat ride? 
Our number six recommendation, pretty simple, to walk along St. Augustine's beautiful bayfront and watch the hundreds of boats come and go. And don't forget to stop at the Bridge of Lions for a selfie. Abby snapped this one by mistake. The St. Photios Greek Orthodox National Shrine is highly recommended at number seven. I passed by the spot dozens of times over the years and never started going inside until recently. The shrine is dedicated to the first colony of Greek people who came to America in 1768. The chapel, unique in the Western Hemisphere, contains elaborate Byzantine-style frescoes of many apostles and saints of the Christian Church. place is awe-inspiring. You should definitely check it out when you're in St. Augustine. There are a number of cathedrals and historic places of worship in the downtown area of St. Augustine you should check out if you get a chance. This is our number eight recommendation. When services or special events aren't taking place, visitors are encouraged to come in and take a look around. Photos are usually allowed and donations are always appreciated. You cannot leave the old city without stepping foot inside of one of Henry Flagler's magnificent hotels that he built in the late 1800s. Our ninth recommendation is to walk the grounds of the Hotel Ponce de Leon, which is now part of Flagler College. The rotunda is truly a masterpiece that will transport you back to the Gilded Age. And the best part is, it's free. But to get a better appreciation of this building, I highly recommend splurging a little and taking the tour. Guided tours led by college docents, a really good way to learn more about Henry Flagler, the father of Florida, as well as St. Augustine. Across the street is the second hotel Flagler built in St. Augustine, the number 10 free thing to do on our list. The Hotel Alcazar was largely a recreational resort featuring sulfur baths, steam room, bowling alley, tennis courts. Probably the most interesting aspect of this hotel is right through these yellow doors. Back in the day, it housed the world's largest indoor swimming pool. The pool area today is used as a cafe and special event space, but it's cool to look down and imagine what it would have been like to have taken a dip here many, many years ago. The hotel was at its peak during the 1890s. During those years, more than 25,000 people would check in here. The upper floors of the building housed the very worthwhile Leitner Museum, while Abby Love well, spending time in the tropical courtyard. One of my favorite things to do when we come here is to feed the koi. Just down King Street is the Governor's House Cultural Center and Museum, which makes the list at number 11. A government building of some type has occupied the site since 1598. Today, part of the building houses a really unique exhibit area that's 100% free. This museum space is run by the University of Florida, and so the exhibits are always rotating. You'll never see the same one here twice. On our last visit, there was an informative exhibit about St. Augustine's beginnings as a Spanish colony. Definitely check it out if you get the chance. You'll appreciate our number 12 recommendation after a day walking around the old city. Inside this 1917 ice manufacturing plant is the St. Augustine Distillery. Take a free tour and learn how small batch vodka, rum, gin, and whiskey are made. Then why don't you go ahead and treat yourself to a free sample of a Florida mule made by the experts in front of your very eyes. You of course can sample a lot more, but the Florida mule seems to be most people's favorite. Just a couple blocks away from the distillery and a building that belonged to Henry Flagler is the San Sebastian Winery. Open since 1996, you've likely seen some of this company's premium wines in your neighborhood grocery store. Free tours are available every 20 minutes or so, and afterwards you can sample the product. For number 13, just look for this giant archway downtown on King Street. Avalay Street is the oldest street in the USA and a popular spot for the red trolleys. This large building was always a hardware store up until the 1930s. Today, you can find art galleries inside. 
The street was given a huge makeover a few years ago with improved sidewalks, and today you'll find a number of cafes, gift shops, and even some more museums. Another street, Treasury Street, makes the list at number 14. At just 7 feet wide, this is supposedly the nation's most narrow street. It was built narrow on purpose so that two men could carry a treasure chest from the bay up to the city. No one wanted to take the chance of a carriage possibly getting attacked by pirates. Our last free recommendation is a short drive out of the downtown area at Fort Mose Historic State Park. This 40-acre waterfront site was the location of the first legally sanctioned free African settlement in what is now the United States. In the mid-1700s, the fort was a sanctuary for those fleeing slavery from the English colonies in the Carolinas. While the fort is no longer there, the park often has live history demonstrations from actors who masterfully tell the story of this often overlooked part of American history. There is a small museum on the property that charges a small admission fee, but it's very well worth it. You learn a lot inside. Thank you so much for exploring historic St. Augustine with us. Hopefully you found something new to check out the next time you're in the area. If we left something off the list, let us know in the comments down below. Please subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Until next time. <laughs>